My name is Hope, but there is no hope for these breasts right here. My right breast is extremely high. It ripples and I have no areola on the bottom. My left breast is extremely hard and all around the bottom, it's massive scarring. The most common complication that you can get from breast implants is capsular contracture. And this is excess scar tissue that can build up around a breast implant. Honestly, as a plastic surgeon who does about 50 to 100 breast augmentations a year, this is the bane of my existence. So I really hope that the Bosch doctors will be able to help her out. I was 24 when I had my first surgery in Houston. About six months after surgery, my right breast was getting hard. I went through three more surgeries with that same doctor. She did four operations with the same doctor and still ended up with what she had? That sucks. Every time a foreign substance like a breast implant is put into a person, the body will naturally create scar tissue around that object, and that scar tissue is called a capsule. In most cases, that capsule is super thin, and in the case of breast implants, it causes the breast to feel natural, and you don't even know there's scar tissue there. But in about two to 5% of cases, sometimes even higher, that scar tissue can get thick. And it can get so thick that it can contract around the implant, making the breast look hard, making it firm, and even painful. That's called a capsular contracture. Sometimes the breast can feel as hard as a bowling ball. Look at these balls, they're as big as my bosom. I wake up from surgery, my breasts were in the worst shape that they had ever been, and I'm just, having a lot of swelling. The treatment for a capsular contracture is called a capsulectomy, where we remove the excess scar tissue from surrounding that breast implant and basically start all over again. The problem with the capsulectomy surgery though is that you're not actually treating the root cause of why it's happened. What we're doing is we're basically starting the patient over again and the body can create that scar tissue again. In that case, it's called a recurrent capsular contracture. It sounds like in her situation, she had that happen over and over and over again, leaving her with a ton of scar tissue. And as I'm massaging it, where the incision was, it bust open. I swear it was like a gallon worth of fluid just gushing out of my breast. Yeah, that's not good. What type of fluid is coming out of her breasts? Well, there are a couple different things that this fluid could be. The first is that that fluid could be pus. She could have a terrible infection of the breast and the breast implant. In that situation, the implant needs to come out because the implant is infected as well, and you have to go without the implant for six to 12 months to allow the breast to heal and for that infection to completely get cleared out of the body. The second thing that that fluid could be is just inflammatory fluid called a seroma. Whenever we do surgery, and really whenever you get any type of trauma or inflammation of the body, the body can create this inflammatory fluid that can surround, in her case, a breast implant. In that situation, the fluid is not dangerous, it's not infected, it's just kind of sitting there, and usually you want to remove that fluid just so you don't slosh all around. Don't slosh it around. It's all about the presentation. The third thing that that fluid could be is that if she had saline implants, I guess it's possible that the implant could have burst causing that fluid to then exit out of the implant and the breast. I called my doctor immediately. My implant is taken out. So this causes us to believe that she had a massive infection of the breast and the treatment is to remove the implant, to place a drain into the breast and to put the patient on antibiotics. You let everything heal for six to 12 months and then you can come back after that when the infection is completely gone and put new implants in. A year and a half after I've gone without this implant, I come across another doctor in Houston. I wake up from surgery, nothing even matches or is right at all. Well, now this looks like a disaster. She is on, I think, surgery number five. She has breasts that are completely asymmetric. They look really scarred in. My guess is that she's got severe capsular contractures on both sides. This actually reminds me of a patient that I operated on not that long ago. Take a look at this patient that I treated not that long ago and you can see that her photo looks quite a bit like Hope's. She had had multiple breast implant surgeries by a different doctor, had multiple complications including capsular contracture and she came to see me as a last ditch effort to try to salvage basically her breasts and her breast implants. Well, like in Hope's situation, this was a very, very difficult thing to treat, but I did bring her to the operating room and treated her. 
Before the end of this video, I'll show you how she looked afterwards. Take us back to the beginning. 20 years ago, I started with 420 cc's. About six, seven months after that, I, I noticed it was getting hard. I went back and had four different surgeries. It continued to get hard. Why does the body create thick scar tissue causing the breast implants in the breast to get really hard in some patients, yet in other patients, doesn't do anything like that at all? Well, there are a lot of hypotheses of why somebody gets a caps or a contracture, and the first is called biofilm. The belief behind the biofilm hypothesis is that a slime layer, a thin layer of bacteria grows on the surface of the implant. And that's bacteria that could come from the skin surface, it could come from the time of the operation, or even from the glandular tissue of the breasts themselves. That biofilm of bacteria is not so much bacteria that it creates a fulminant infection or an abscess, but it's enough bacteria to cause a body to react to it to create scar tissue around it and to try to wall it off, causing that capsular contracture. There are other potential causes of capsular contracture other than the biofilm theory. A study show that if there is a hematoma or bleeding around the implant after surgery, there is a higher risk of a capsular contracture. And I do believe that there is a percentage of people that no matter what you do, they just don't do well with implants. No more implants. Their body just overreacts and scars around implants no matter the surgeon, no matter the technique, and no matter the antibiotics or anything that you do, their body just doesn't like implants. When you look at somebody like Hope, when she's had four or five operations and her breast implants keep getting hard, she might be in that category. So I have a flight attendant friend who tells me about this great doctor in LA. It was gonna cost me a lot of money, but the nurses pull me to the back and they say, you know, we can try to drop the price down if you puncture the implant what? and tear a hole in it. Why would they tell her to puncture her implant to save her money? I'll go deflate him. The only reason that I can think of why they would try to convince her to do this is that breast implants do have a warranty. If you have an implant that ruptures, whether it's saline or silicone, if it occurs in the first 10 years after the implant is placed, then typically the implant companies will not only give you a free pair of implants to replace them, but they will pay you anywhere from $1,200 up to $3,600 or more to help replace those implants. So is it possible that these nurses were trying to convince her to commit fraud in order to get that warranty money? I'm a fraud. I got the syringe, I would stab it, and then I would suck it out and suck mm -hmm. it out and suck it out. Yeah, don't do this at home. So what's the worst thing that could happen if she does this to herself? There are two things I could think of. The first thing is if you stick that needle in far enough, you could potentially puncture one of the large internal blood vessels and you could bleed out and die within minutes. Not quite as immediately life-threatening, but definitely life-threatening is you can also puncture your lung and cause your lung to completely deflate. Neither of these are things that you want to happen to yourself. So do not ever take a needle and stick it into your chest. Life isn't like Pulp Fiction, my friends. You have a scarification problem, which basically means scar tissue has grown unevenly throughout both the breasts. So like we thought, she has a major scarring issue around her implants. So the big question is how do you treat it? Let's take a peek at their plan and then I'll give you what my plan would be. Are you like the millions of people who have a bathroom filled with half-empty bottles and tubes of skincare? They may have promised to reduce your wrinkles, lighten your blemishes, and help you feel better about your skin, but none of them actually worked. Well, I've got the answer for you. It's called Yoon Beauty. Yoon Beauty is one of the only skincare lines that combines natural and organic ingredients with the latest in scientifically proven components like vitamin C and retinol. I'm so certain that you'll love Yoon Beauty products that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Head to YoonBeauty.com and use the coupon code 20 off to get $20 off your first order over $99. I'll put a link in the caption below. Once you try Yoon Beauty products, I bet you'll throw away your other skincare products and start loving your skin again. Thank you for putting your trust in me. 
For Hope's surgery today, I will make incisions below her areolas and then perform an anterior capsulectomy to remove the front part of the scar tissue surrounding her implant. So I would do this part of the surgery a little bit differently. Uh, studies are showing that if you make an incision around the areola or the colored circle around the nipple, that has a higher risk of capsular contracture than if you make an incision underneath the breast. And so I would start off by making an incision underneath the breast to keep that risk of capsular contracture lower. Then he talked about performing an anterior capsulectomy. And this is basically removing the scar tissue from the front surface of the implant. Ideally, in addition to the anterior capsulectomy, you would also do a posterior or a complete capsulectomy to remove all the scar tissue around both implants. This is gonna lessen your risk of recurrence of that biofilm and hopefully lower your risk of recurrence of the capsular contracture. That's good. Next, I remove her old implants, lift up the chest muscle, and manipulate the breast tissue before inserting a smaller pair of implants, hopefully giving Hope the symmetry she's been chasing. Studies show that when implants are placed partially underneath the muscle, and the muscle is the pectoralis major muscle, the big muscle of the chest, when those implants are placed underneath that muscle, the risk of a capsular contracture is lower than when it's above the muscle. And for this reason, in most of my first time breast augmentation patients, I do put the implants underneath the muscle. Now, one thing that he hasn't mentioned in a surgical plan that I would definitely consider for her is the use of Stratus. Stratus is radiated pig skin. Yeah, pig, 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 pig. Yes, it's the skin taken from a pig it is radiated to remove the cells from it, and you can put that into the breast tissue envelope around the implant after you do the capsulectomy, and it modulates the immune response to that implant to reduce the risk of capsular contracture. You, you lost me. So what does that mean that I just said? <laughs> Basically it means that if you take radiated pig skin, you put it into the breast implant pocket, the body will not react quite as aggressively to the implant as it may otherwise, and you may lower your risk of capsular contracture. I use this in rare cases when I've got a salvage operation, when somebody like Hope's case where they just keep getting that contracture over and over and over again, it can lower the risk of that contracture coming back to 10% or less. The problem with using Stratus is that it is pig skin, and it's kind of gross when you think about it to have pig skin inside your breast, and it is really, really expensive and lengthens the operation. Okay, so let's go in this side and assess the pocket. Okay, right away we can see she has really thick scar tissue. So the first step in this operation is then to dissect around that scar tissue. Once again, you want to remove as much of that as possible. The scar tissue sometimes though can be so thick it can calcify, literally like the shell of an egg. Can I offer you a hot boiled egg? And if you take that implant out and then squeeze that scar tissue, it can literally crackle and crunch like you're crunching up an eggshell in your hand. Okay, I'm gonna try to lift up this muscle. By putting the implants under the muscle, I'm providing an extra layer of protection overlying the implant that may help her to heal without a complication. That is totally true, but the problem with trying to lift that muscle up and slip the implant underneath it is that we don't know the condition of that muscle. In some people, the muscle is nice and thick and it's not so difficult to lift it up. In other people, that muscle can be quite thin and it can be wispy and it can even tear as you're lifting it up off the chest wall. So this is a very, very difficult operation. We have almost symmetrical breasts. The nipple heights are exactly the same. We've reduced the left areola. With a little bit of luck, she should heal this. Let's put her down, let's close. Let's get her in recovery, okay? You can see that she had a lift on the left side, so she had some excess skin on that side. There were staples holding that skin together. What he would do next is remove those staples, cut the skin out, and suture everything together. On table, it looks pretty good, so I'm curious to see how it looks several months later. It's been really amazing with my new breast. I don't have to adjust my bra over and over. Before my surgery, there was no hope for these boobs. My breasts were completely uneven, but now thanks to Dr. Dubrow, my breast and areolas are symmetrical. All scarring is gone. Kudos to Dr. Dubrow, he did a fantastic job, and I'm really happy for Hope that she got the breast that she always wanted. 
However, the key is going to be longevity. This is 10 weeks after the operation. Usually if the implants get hard, they will harden within the first few months. And so she's not out of the woods yet, but at 10 weeks, this is a really good sign if her breasts remain nice and soft. If, God forbid, they hardened up again, then my recommendation would be to do it one more time using Stratus or to consider either living with it or just taking the implants out. I do believe that for some people, implants just aren't right for their bodies. But that being said, she looks fantastic and I'm really happy for her. Hope underwent a very successful operation to treat a complication from breast implants. But what about if those implants are removed, giving you what a patient calls zombie boobs? Yes, a patient had such horrible complications from her implants that she nicknamed her breasts zombie boobs. Take a peek at this video right up here where I react to an episode of Botched where Dr. Debro helps to correct a woman with these zombie boobs. You'll be floored at what happened to her and what Dr. Debro does to fix her up. And I'll give you my opinion along the way. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.